Hi everybody, this is George Halt from MakeEbookCovers.com and I want to welcome you to our Web 2.0 button tutorial for GIMP. Uh, we're going to start out in, uh, with how to make one of these cool glossy looking buttons um, that you see all over the web. It's zoomed in a little bit here so that you can get a good look at it, but uh, if you zoom out to the actual size, it might be a little hard to see on the video, but it gets rid of some of the graininess and uh, looks really, looks really, really cool. So. Let's, uh, let's get started. We're going to start by opening a new image. We're just going to set this to 200 by 100. And we're going to set the background color to white, so that's good. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so that we can see what we're doing. We're going to start by uh, creating the form of our button. So we're going to add a new layer with the transparency. And I always like to have transparency on mine we're going to create the button shape. We're going to use the rectangle select tool. We're going to make sure that the uh, rounded corners is checked on and that the uh, the radius is set to about 15 for the uh, dimension that we're using with 200 by 100. 15 is about a, a good curve for our button. We're just going to drag that out. And we're going to pick a good color. I'm partial to blue, so we're going to pick a nice bright blue color. We're going to use our bucket tool and we're going to fill that that button creating the overall shape of our button. We're going to add a new layer and we're going to go select shrink and we're going to set this to one pixel and hit OK and that's going to create a selection that's a little bit smaller and uh, this layer is going to allow that that edge around the outside to really show through. We're going to set our background to a light blue, a lighter version of the dark blue that we've got there. So we've got dark in the front, light in the back. We're going to choose our blend tool. And we're going to set our gradient to foreground to background. So that's going to go the dark blue to the light blue with a linear shape to it. We're going to set the opacity to about 75, somewhere in there. Anywhere between 70 and 80 is good. Start in the middle of the button and drag down and that's going to give us that gradient that we want. We're going to add another new layer and this is where we're going to make our little glossy reflection. So we're going to use the select tool again, the rectangle select with the rounded edges, keep the same radius and we're going to just select the top half of the button and then we're going to drag these corners, kind of resize this so the corners get up nice and tight up into the corner. That looks pretty good and uh, we're going to choose a foreground color of white. We're going to choose the blend tool and set the gradient to be foreground to transparent. And we're going to keep that linear and we're going to select from the very top edge of the selection to the bottom edge and that's going to give us our reflection. Next we're going to add a little bit of a highlight to the bottom, so we're going to add another new layer. We're going to use the pencil tool with white as our color. We're going to use circle number three, and we're going to line up China just below the edge of the reflection there, that glossy reflection, uh, as close to the bottom as you can get, and draw a straight line all the way across the bottom edge of the button. That gives us a nice ugly white line, which looks horrible at the moment, but we're going to fix that right now. We're going to go up to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We're going to set it to 12 and 12 and hit OK. And that gives us a nice little highlight on the bottom. So at this point, we're pretty much ready to add our text. So we're going to hit the Text tool. I like Trebuchet Bold myself uh, and white for the font color. Just type something cool in here like Web 2.0 and center that up a little bit. And once you get it looking the way you want it, uh, the next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of a highlight around that text. So with that layer selected, we're going to go up to Filters, Light and Shadow, Drop Shadow, and we're going to set the offsets to zero, 0, 
the blur radius to 5, color to black, opacity to 80, and hit OK. That creates a little edging to our text to make it pop a little bit on that button. We're going to do the same thing for the very bottom layer, the, the uh, outside edge of our button. And that's going to give our button a little bit of a 3D effect. So you want to select that bottom layer, and hit filters, repeat, drop shadow. It'll keep those same settings and just give it a little bit of a three-dimensional look. If we zoom out a little bit here, it gets rid of some of the graininess of the image. It might be difficult to see on the video, but it makes the button itself look a lot smoother. Now you can actually uh, save this as an XCF file, drop uh, those two layers, delete those top two layers, the text and the drop shadow, and then just uh, then you can add more text and create another identical button to go with it. So you might say like buy now. Once you get it lined up the way that you want it, you uh, go ahead and repeat that uh, that drop shadow. Uh, so you've got new text, new drop shadow, and uh, it looks great. Well, listen, if uh, if you like this tutorial, head over to www.makeebookcovers.com. We have a great step-by-step -step tutorial on making those cool 3D ebook covers that you see, or those 3D software box images. Um, we've got sample 3D templates to play with. We even have resources for finding people who will pay you for your graphics. So stop by MakeyBookCovers.com and check us out.